our idea with the, the phases of research was, was just that there, there, in our view, there needs to be an order to the uh, research and development of new uh, intervention techniques and that there was in fact very little order in the uh, st studies that, that appear uh, on, uh, uh, of intervention for, for young children. So we were hoping to, to uh, make that point. Uh, and so we, we said, well, what, what phases or stages of, of development are already out there? And the, the, obvious, the obvious types of, of uh, stages or phases were what's used in, in drug research uh, or uh, the, uh, the, the development of a surgical device or, or something of, of that sort. And there are generally four or five stages. It depends on, on how they're, they're uh, broken up. But the, the problem in applying those to children's speech and language disorders is that the first two phases, as a matter of fact, deal with things like uh, the, uh, the safety and the, the dosage uh, the, the dosages which are safe versus non-safe, not, not necessarily the doses that work versus the ones that don't work. It's the one, trying to identify w w the, the, the highest dosage that, that an individual can get without, without uh, uh, ha having uh, safety issues. Uh, I didn't see any particular correlate to that in, in ch uh, children's language because even though I, I believe it's possible to do language intervention in a way that could actually be harmful, uh, could actually slow the child uh, down as opposed to speed, uh, speeding them up and facilitating their progress, uh, I don't see anything that's quite like uh, uh, a phase one uh, study that would, would deal with uh, uh, safety or phase, even phase two dealing still with uh, safety and, and, and dosage and to, to a lesser extent the, the efficacy. So, so the, the, the question was how, what, what is out there? If we look, if we look at a literature uh, like the, we, we chose the, the use of sentence recasts and recasts, uh, we, we chose it just because there were a number of studies out there and we thought we might be able to, to use those studies as, as examples of what, what might reflect useful uh, uh, stages of, of development. So, so we started with, uh, we, we called them uh, preclinical studies and those, those uh, in our first uh, stage uh, the preclinical studies; those are things where uh, the 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 investigator may or may not even be thinking about uh, about uh, intervention with what they're examining. There, uh, it would involve studies that are correlational studies, for example, that try to relate certain variables today or earlier with later language uh, progress. Uh, so, those sorts of studies. Uh, with a correlational design would be, would be uh, preclinical. Uh, then the next phase that we, we selected, and I think pre, the, the, the beauty of preclinical is that, uh, or preclinical studies from, for an interventionist is oftentimes the idea for, uh, the idea for an intervention technique could actually come from, from that. The, a correlational study can't determine cause and effect relationships, but it can give us ideas as, and allow us to generate hypotheses uh, about what might, in fact, uh, have a cause and effect relationship uh, that would uh, be a positive influence on, on development for children. So the, the preclinical studies led then to the, what, what Liza, I didn't credit Liza Feinstack. She's, she's my, uh, my former uh, doc student and the person uh, who's, who's been involved with me and, and we, we wrote a chapter in a book about, about uh, these phases. Anyway, the feas in, the, in a feasibility study, uh, those should be studies where now, now uh, at this point, uh, 
the investigator is intentionally doing something, they're doing something that they believe will have a positive impact on whatever aspect of language it is that they're, that they're dealing with. It's just that they're, they're not taking all the steps necessary, they're not, they're not sufficiently controlling the study and ruling out the subjectivity uh, of the, uh, of the uh, study to determine cause and effect. Uh, feasibility studies are, are studies that are done largely to, to, uh, to ask the question like, um, will children tolerate this? Will, will they, uh, will they uh, play this, you know, do this sort of activity or is it so boring or so, so tedious or somehow onerous that a young child uh, simply won't attend and, and do, do the, uh, the activity? Uh, in feasibility studies may have some interest in, and usually do have interest in uh, effects of those things that are being tried out. But again, they're not they're not sufficiently experimental uh, uh, to allow the investigator to make a claim that that the uh, the intervention technique that's or, or techniques that are being used are having a uh, uh, a positive effect. So you get post, uh, pre-post uh, types of, of designs, uh, n no control group types of designs, uh, which are, are fine for showing that this, this therapy is uh, the children, as long as, you, as long as you reinforce them for their participation, that they'll do this task for a long time. Or, or they'll only do it for five minutes at a time and you have to then do something else. Those are the types of questions that we're, we're asking with feasibility. Uh, we're, we're, we're taking a hypothesis that may have been developed at the, at, at, at the preclinical level and now we're actually trying it as a therapy technique, uh, uh, but, we're, but we're not yet doing the experiment. The, the experimental levels come next and the first level there we call the early efficacy level, uh, and the second of those, the second level then after that, which is the, the fourth uh, in, in our series, uh, that is, uh, we, I, I refer to those as later uh, efficacy studies. And the main difference I saw in these studies, uh, the early and later efficacy, w was that both of them, because they're efficacy studies, now the investigator is interested in, in making a demonstration that the, the uh, independent variable, that is the, the intervention, whatever it is, uh, has uh, or does not have a positive uh, Im impact on the outcome. The, uh, in order to really control this tightly, however, uh, because the investigator is really interested in the internal validity of the study, they, um, they may, as a matter of fact, choose an outcome variable that is, uh, is not highly functional. It, it, it's something that's very measurable, something that gives a, a good indication that, uh, that progress has, has been made so you can see uh, you can see a change from the pre to the, to the post. But uh, an early efficacy study would have, uh, would basically have experimental control. Ideally, it, it actually would have uh, randomization of its subjects where, where the, uh, the subject, the, the investigator randomly assigns uh, children to either receive the intervention or to receive something else or to re receive nothing from the project. Uh, Generally, with kids in these sorts of situations, we, we can't with, withhold intervention that they're already receiving. Uh, so those types of interventions usually go on in the background. Uh, uh, but the idea in an early efficacy study is, is to uh, answer the question, is there a relationship between the intervention that I, I got w way back here by, by uh, p attending to a study on normal language development uh, by someone who had no interest in necessarily in uh, language impaired children. 
applied it in a feasibility study to determine that this is a package of intervention techniques that kids will, will seem to enjoy and that seems to have some, uh, some potential uh, for being uh, efficacious. Now we're actually testing that, that hypothesis that, the, that, the, that the, this intervention is efficacious. And the, the problem is the, the, uh, the way we measure the outcome uh, is not sufficiently functional uh, in, in all likelihood will be um, some sort of uh, probe that is developed and done in a therapy-like uh, situation. Uh, uh, that's not bad from an experimental point of view because we can control those variables and, uh, and, and we can choose outcome variables that again are, are measurable and uh, reliable uh, and uh, sensitive to change uh, or uh, sensitive to, uh, to development. So they change uh, over a developmental period. The later efficacy studies differ from the early efficacy studies largely in terms of, of the, uh, the interest in uh, carrying out the study in more, more uh, lifelike situations and primarily measuring, uh, the, uh, measuring outcomes in situations that are really different from the context within which the intervention actually takes place. So uh, we, we may intervene on half a dozen very specific uh, grammatical forms, for example, um, as part of the intervention, but we measure the outcome using some omnibus measure like a mean length of utterance or developmental sentence scoring where uh, you generate a language sample as opposed to doing a probe that's specifically tied to the intervention task. Uh, you, may, you may simply play with the child or, or get them to, uh, to uh, respond to a, a book or something like that. Something that's not, that, that, looks, that does not look like the intervention in a context that's different from the intervention uh, and uh, uh, using a measure that is more more functional, uh, uh, that that would distinguish the early efficacy study from the later efficacy study. Uh, the final stage is actually the final stage in the uh, in the drug uh, sequence as as well. Uh, that's what we call effectiveness. There is a, di a di we make a distinction between efficacy and effectiveness, even though the dictionary uh, looks at them as as roughly synonymous. Uh, in in healthcare, they're definitely definitely not. Uh, efficacy studies are done under lab laboratory conditions, where the focus is really on the internal validity of the study, and uh, we're trying more than anything else to show a clear. Uh, relationship between the use of the intervention and and uh, positive out outcomes. Uh, we we uh, make the the con we we modify the the conditions of the study as much as necessary so that we can so that we won't miss that that effect if it if it's really there. Uh, in an effectiveness study, uh, now we're really now we're really trying to say. What would this? Uh, what would the outcome of this particular intervention be, if we allowed people uh, to administer it in really lifelike, uh, non-laboratory uh, types of contexts? It's kind of like if there's a new drug. Let's just say it's a drug, uh, uh, aspirin. Let's say there's uh, somebody proposes that there's yet another thing that aspirin uh, uh, does. Uh, the first trials would be done under very carefully controlled conditions uh, where there's they're very close monitoring of the, the, the dose, making sure the patients take it and they take it on time and so forth and so on. Well, that's not like the real world. In the real world, pe people uh, get the prescription uh, and they get the dosage and they may or may take it. They, they, they'll take all the pills on one day and, and forget the next two days and, and then make up for those two days. And 
So, so there are all kinds of things that can can happen in the in the the real world that are different from the, that controlled laboratory uh, uh, situation, and uh, so the final phase would be uh, evaluating the uh, the treatment to show that under more lifelike uh, circumstances, uh, with outcomes that are really uh, uh, broad and uh, highly functional, the types of uh, types of outcome measures like clini uh, clinicians actually use when they're really working with families and really really doing interventions designed to have an effect on on uh, the way children communicate. Uh, that would be the that would be the highest level, and uh, we have very few uh, s studies uh, like like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, what usually happens is uh, a technique will will get will be studied up to what we call the early efficacy uh, uh, phase, and then there may or may not be anything that goes beyond that at all. So there there are at least two potential phases, at least two potential phases, that oftentimes get skipped. Uh, Liza and I just, there's nothing magical about our five, our five stages. Uh, we may tur they may turn out to be not the best stages or, or the way we've, we've defined them. Uh, the boundaries between those uh, different phases may turn out n not to be the best ones. But if investigators try to go all the way to early efficacy or later efficacy too soon, then they're likely to waste a lot of time and a lot of uh, a lot of money. Uh, they would be much better off uh, uh, f focusing uh, on on uh, preclinical or or f feasibility studies, making sure that those issues related to the feasibility of their approach, uh, uh, identifying outcome measures that are reliable and sensitive uh, to to change. Uh, that's the, the we, we need to invest a lot in that type of study because there there we, we have less to lose by doing that and if we can demo, if we can demonstrate that a study is very feasible then uh, it becomes much easier to ask for uh, for money to do early and later efficacy studies and eventually effectiveness studies so the idea again the, the basic idea is can we get a, a, a sequence of developmental phases of research where the early, earlier ones are uh, relatively less r risky, uh, less costly, uh, and yet answer questions that we really need to have answered about the intervention, and then get uh, uh, more uh, funding that's necessary to do the other studies. The other thing that's crucial that I should point out is that I think it's absolutely crucial that that there be some sort of uh, a depository for studies that uh, I'm referring to as feasibility studies. Uh, they, uh, if there's not a place where people can put those those studies, so that everyone can benefit uh, uh, and gain knowledge about things like the best outcome measures or the the uh, uh, a, a child's tolerance uh, uh, and their their how happy they are with the interventions and so forth. If that if we have that sort of uh, if people are going to bother to to take the time to get that sort of uh, information, there has to be a place for them to put it, or they're or they're uh, they're going to be committing academic suicide. Uh, be, because they'll they'll never get uh, these studies take so long uh, and so much energy uh, that if if they can't if an investigator can't actually study these studies which many people just call pilot studies uh, then uh, then then I think we're in for for a lot of a lot of trouble and it's not likely that we're going to get the the efficacy and effectiveness studies that we. Uh, really, would hope to get. Uh, on the other hand, if we if we we might very well be able to enlist more individuals in uh, in be 
becoming intervention scientists if they have these codified phases or steps that, they, that they're expected to go through and if uh, there are journals that understand that, that part of their function is to, uh, is to publish well uh, described, well motivated and theoretically based uh, uh, feasibility studies of, of interventions that, that would seem to have, uh, would seem from a theoretical perspective to have, uh, to have some merit.